Muzi Dladla is, joined SASRIA in June 2021 as Executive Manager, Stakeholder Management, bringing with him a wealth of knowledge and over 20 years experience in various management, managerial and executive level positions. Very soon after Muzi joined SASRIA, massive riots hit KZN and parts of Gauteng. In Afrikaans, we call it a vuurdoop in the upcoming FIA Summit, happening virtually on 5 October, Muzi will be taking the audience through the tailwinds aftermath and the headwinds, um, what we can expect and what's yet to come. And he'll be finishing it off with how we best can prepare for it. And um, so Muzi, the purpose of our chat today is that you give people who still deciding if they want to, to join the FIA Summit or people who will be joining in any case, a brief overview of what you will be talking about. It's, it's a very topical issue. It's something that um, hits a lot of people to the core, these riots. So I, I think you will have a big audience um, and a lot of people keen to hear what, what you have to say. So over to you. Thank you very much, Renit. It's, it's good to see you and to talk to you um, as usual. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I think that the biggest thing is, is not necessarily really to focus on, on, on just SASRIA, you know, as an entity, to talk just broadly about the, the, the whole non-life insurance space, just look at the market outlook, you know, mm -hmm. to look at some of the things that were actually some of the, um, you know, the tailwinds that come from uh, uh, the COVID space, some of the good things and some of the good things that we actually could still be doing and that we should be doing uh, and the opportunities that are being brought by that. But, but most importantly, um, I think I'm going to spend a little bit of more time on the headwind side of things. You know, what are some of the things that we could potentially still have blind spots on, you know, still not really see in the clear view that are still coming because the tailwinds are things that you would have already passed through when you've had the experiences you know, um, like we are right now in Sastra, I have had quite a number of things that we've learned, you know, and we've also consulted with a lot of other uh, similar structures and entities, you know, around the world who have experienced something similar. So I'll share a little bit of information on that, but more importantly, the headwinds, I think that's what I want to focus on, you know, looking at some of the things like, um, you know, the rising different types of inflations, for, for an example, and not just the economical inflations, but some other ones that are sort of like not really seen or are in the clear. But um, I'm gonna unpack all of those just so that we can have a discussion about it. So that's pretty much the, the comparison of the pluses and the minus, you know, the tailwinds and the headwinds. That's pretty much why I described it the way that I have. Okay, I'm, I'm really excited to, to look at, would you mind touching on one or two of the of the lessons learned from a SASRA perspective, and maybe just one or two things that that you that you think we we have no clue about what's coming. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me start with maybe one headwind, just briefly on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The issue of uh, social inflation, right? And you might think, what is social inflation? So, um, you know, the example to give an example, which would make it much easier to describe. Those are some of the things that are related to claims estimation by insurance companies, or even claims that we potentially don't reserve for, we don't think are claims, but because of some eventualities that are currently happening, like with COVID, as it came, BI became a social inflation. So what that means then is that something that you, inflation of your claims that you did not reserve for in the past and didn't even plan for, and you are being litigated and you lose that litigation, it's so all of a sudden becomes a huge cost in the balance sheet, something that you haven't planned for. So there are a couple of those various scenarios that we, we, we um, I'll be unpacking just, you know, as insurers, which is not, I think maybe some of the more financially inclined and the actuaries could start looking at, maybe to make a provision for, as an example, it's things that are still too early, you know, to, to really do scientifically. But those are some of the things that we are looking at. So I think the perfect example would be the BI saga that uh, uh, Sanctum has, has had taken to court for, and it became a social inflation for them that their claims was actually inflated by a huge margin, and, and they didn't even actually plan for that. You know, and 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 some of the the things that are related to what have we learned? You know, at, at Sasha as an example, you know, is that 
things like this uh, do happen, like they had happened now. I mean, we have paid, you know, just over uh, 20 billion in rents. I don't think there has ever been in South Africa any event, single event that would cost an insurance company so much. So there's some learnings in respect of, uh, because you're very at risk, you always know what you're very at risk, but sometimes you might miscalculate your, your NPL, so maximum probable loss estimations, you know, because you, 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 you just, in your scenario planning, you just don't envisage something to this magnitude happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that whole thing, like if you're looking at the, the, the World Trade Center, the two towers, yeah. there it was never imagined that two of them could fall at the same time. You know, so the, the, the beefing up of your scenario planning, as well as anticipation of what could potentially happen, particularly uh, putting together indicators that might lead you to understanding what those potentially could be. So you could never stop those, but if you have early warning systems, there are certain things that you can do. So it's just, you know, in a nutshell, some of the things that um, a, a lot of questions is going on in my head, but I don't want to let you give your whole talk. So um, <laughs> when, when you were talking about the biggest claim ever, um, I, I was immediately thinking about a previous conversation I had with one of the other speakers, which touched on natural catastrophes, which is not your space. Um, but um, just as a comment, I thought, um, I think we are not really prepared for what might still come in terms of natural catastrophes going forward, because I, I think there's gonna be some big claims going forward if we don't make big changes as a world, not even only as South Africa. South Africa are lagging behind in terms of a lot of things on how we're supposed to, to, to do things. Um, and, I, and I think the pressure is on us to, to make some changes, but, but it's definitely a, a partnership um, of the whole world and public and private partnerships working together. So that was just um, a side comment on my side of yeah, claims to come, but that's, but that's um, why we are in the industry. We are, we are there to pay claims. Um, I think right. the magnitude is going to just explode going forward. Um, just maybe, maybe we can quickly touch on, on, on claims. Um, it's nothing to do with your talk. It touches on it a little bit. Is everything under control with claims? How, many, how much claims have you more or less settled? Um, maybe just a, a positive word to, to the people out there. Okay, yeah, look, the, 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 the total quantum hasn't really, we haven't reached the final figure. It's still moving up and down, you know, uh, when estimations are being adjusted, it moves down. And then when uh, some estimations in certain areas, it, it moves down. But I mean, it averages, you know, it's in the 20 billions. Um, and the, the, the good news is that, because remember, we were, we were given a 3.9 billion injection by Treasury. And thereafter, and that was pretty much to help us to get to a position where we are able to pay the claims, right? But remember, Sastra's sustainability relies not only in being able to pay the current claims, but in being resilient for more claims that could potentially come in the future. So we've also had further commitment. Uh, well, in fact, we are still in discussions. Let me not preempt. But uh, the commitment has been given by Treasury that uh, that is exactly where we're going. So we are now where we now we are past the whole thing. I know there's been some information about Sastra being bankrupt and all that, but we passed that a long time ago. We are now looking at how do we make ourselves more resilient for the future, not only in terms of the capital coming from Treasury because that's already already been committed. You know, in terms of the, our business model, in terms of our capital structure. You know, in terms of our reinsurance programs, how do we change them in such a way that um, it makes us more resilient for the future and we are able to protect our balance sheet better? You know, those are some of the learnings, uh, you know, if you like, from our side. So, yeah, it is, I think it would be, um, I wasn't really planning on talking about that, yeah. but uh, no, now, no, now, that asked, <laughs> <laughs> now that you asked, now that you asked, so... Everyone is always keen to you, so um, yeah. Now, now that you asked, so so that's what we're working on right now, and we we, we obviously there's a press statement which we'll be releasing um, I think in about a day from now, 
because we, we obviously do have to respond. Uh, we don't want to leave people to having speculations, you know. So we are sending out a, a, a media statement just to highlight some of these things and, you know, request that we just be given the time to, to rebuild the business. So yeah. the fact of us uh, going down is no longer a discussion in my view. <laughs> you know, yeah. really anyone who wants to go back there, we've been there, we've, we've passed that, you know. We are pumping money in, back into the industry now. Um, and we are really making that difference, you know, because yeah. uh, at some point it ended up feeling like, you know, we are the ones who went out and looted and, and, and touched the buildings, you know, whereas we are actually the good guys. We, yeah. we are putting people back in the position that they were before, which, <laughs> which is what Sasha was created for from the beginning. You know? Exactly. Uh, to, talking about, um, let's give you time to 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 just get back on your feet. Um, you know that the elections are or close. <laughs> Are you guys expecting anything um, around elections that might be a bit of a disruption in your space? Well, elections have not historically been the biggest issue for us. You know, um, the, the two major issues have been historically uh, wage negotiation strikes, you know, on, on the labor side and uh, service delivery protests. And this That's year was what? The, and the rights this year, um, it was there was a touch of um, serious politics going on there. Anyway, yeah. let's not go into that. Um, <laughs> I, I also don't think that there's anything major that we need to be um, worried about. Um, I just thought I'll I'll drop a, a coin. <laughs> anyway, right. Lucy, it was fabulous to chat to you as always. Um, I am really looking forward to to your talk. I will definitely be listening, and if I news will be we'll be writing some articles on that. So um, except for listening to you, why should people register or make sure that they don't miss the FIA summit on 5 October? I think this year, more than any other year, uh, there's a lot more relevance. You know, um, if you're looking at the, uh, the number of speakers and the topics that are being spoken about are things of really serious importance that need unpacking and you know um, and they need a bit of a perspective in looking at those things so anybody who is in the financial services industry um, and not just insurance I would say uh, would need to register for this because I think it would really be in their favor because we just came out of COVID we've just had these unrests uh, economically there's a lot happening and insurance being one of those major trusted risk transfer mechanisms is, is, some, is something really to be talked about. Yeah, um, and, I, and it's like true that you say, it's definitely not only for, for brokers because the FIA is the guys who really look after and speak to the brokers. It is definitely for anyone in the industry. So great chatting um, and let's catch up soon. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure.